you have a boy, it's like, oh, why are you crying? But the girl, it's okay to cry. Like, what are you having? The girl can be a total mess. And the guy has Screaming. to be a totally disconnected. <laughs> exactly. So different things like that. We've lost touch with it. Or, you know, we looked at what mom and dad modeled and we copied them. I'm curious. So when you think of what makes your process different, like when you think of the Peter Levine stuff or the somatic work that you see out there or other methodologies, like why does your pathway get better mm -hmm. results than average? I'm curious. And mm -hmm. like, also, how do you even know you're healed of X, Y, Z challenge? Like when do, mm -hmm. you, do you believe people are like, get totally free of like, depression or a trauma or they're always perpetually healing something i do believe yeah and i believe that there's five stages to healing and that it can't be rushed and it's not it depends on what area of your life that you're working on i had a client that came out of a 28 year marriage right it's like and and it's having not gonna be one session <laughs> exactly exactly and so knowing to go as fast as their slowest part and uh but but i do believe and i have seen it hundreds of times of people fully overcoming something and i think what's missing a lot of times that i see is that people aren't recognizing that there's five stages to it mm -hmm. and that they're skipping stages um you know st and you're like what are these stages probably mm -hmm. stage one is is awareness right and this is what usually brings people in but there's so much depth in awareness in and of itself. And it's so important to go into that depth first. Stage two is acceptance. Nothing to change, nothing to fix. And this is the stage that is the hardest for people to do on their own. And sometimes the one that takes the longest for people to graduate from when they do. This is where they need the most guidance. Because acceptance is, well, there's nothing to change, nothing to fix. There's just to be with what is. And this is where... I was bringing up before, like we have forgotten how to be with what is, how to be exactly what it is that we are being and feeling in that moment. Mm -hmm. So sensations are the language of the nervous system. That is how we open the door and, and say, okay, I'm being neutral here. I'm not saying this is a threat. I'm not saying this is fine and pretending yeah. it's fine. I'm admitting here's the sensations I'm feeling, but now accepting what, what emotion is there yeah. and getting specific with the emotions that are there. I think people's vocabulary of their emotions have really shrunk down. I use something called the mood meter. Okay. It's from Yale university and it, uh, I think you'll be able to find it. If not, I'll, I'll definitely share yeah. it with you. Um, I have people look at that and identify all the different type of moods, the, uh, emotions. It gives more language to their emotion. And then once you land on like, well, I thought I felt sad, but it's actually disheartened. There's this different right? Your vocabulary would probably say sad. And when people are able to look at this and get more accurate and say, oh, it's actually, I feel disheartened. And then what is it to feel disheartened instead of to just think about it, to actually feel mm -hmm. in this is a huge part of my practice is having my clients realize that every emotion is, is like a wave in the ocean of your emotions. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you've ever surfed, but a couple of times, not, I'm not very good. I, I flubbed that up. <laughs> So a wave comes to surf to, to make it back to shore. You you gotta ride the wave, mm -hmm. right? And so same thing, as these waves of emotions come up, we have to learn again how to ride them. And yeah. so visual and practice that I wanna give the listeners and yourself here is imagine you're on stage and you're it's a one man, one woman show, right? You're the only one and you can't speak, but you have to the audience has to get that you are being whatever it is, right? I am this heart. It, that, that comes off. You would have to actually embody it. You would have to fully express it. 
meaning you would use your body, you would use your facial expressions, you would emote sound. And if you watch a child, you have a three-year-old, right? Yeah, yeah, three-year-old. She's three. She's three. Okay. When she gets upset, do you say, "Dad, I'm upset," or is it like a full-body expression? Uh, she's a full-body expressive girl. Yeah. <laughs> like she's all in. <laughs> Most I mean, that's what we've lost touch with. Yeah, yeah. How you have to come back to that inner child knowing what it is to fully express an emotion. Mm-hmm. So what that's happens with hmm. Yeah, so to clarify, it's almost like we what I'm interpreting from you is almost like, all right, we entered into the world in a full body expression if we were healthy. And then mm-hmm. we learn to disconnect parts of ourselves, compartmentalize. Tap that away. Mm-hmm. That's not appropriate. That's not safe. That's boom, right. boom, boom. Got to manage yeah. yourself. Manage your emotions. Or exactly. Them off. Yeah. Or right. if you have a boy, it's like, oh, why are you crying? But the girl, it's okay to cry. But like, what are you the having? Girl can be a total mess. And the guy has Screaming. to be totally disconnected. <laughs> exactly. So different things like that. We've lost touch with it. Or, you know, we looked at what mom and dad modeled and we copied them. Mm-hmm. So... When we do this, Harvard did a study that you can move through an emotion in 90 seconds. Very good. Whoa, 90 seconds? That's wild. That's wild. I don't move through my, you know, most people hearing that for the first time would be like, uh, no. And that's because they're not feeling the emotion. They're not (laughs) riding the actual wave. They're resisting it. They're Mm -hmm. wanting to fix it. They're judging it. They're analyzing it. So when you embody it, Right? Get on stage and express it. Be disheartened. Right? What's the body language of that? What's the facial? What's the sound? Or whatever your client is feeling. And you set a timer for 90 seconds. They move through it. It's data. What it is, is when you're being it with your fullness of yourself, you're actually giving data to your nervous system. Mm I'm like, oh, this is what this energy aka emotion feels like (laughs) oh okay and and so your nervous system goes to metabolize it digest it and discharge it no no i've seen this with my clients time and time again of like i'll set the timer we'll ride the wave (laughs) and Mm -hmm. i cheerlead them to really go all into it and it could feel very strange i'm like yeah pretend you're it doesn't matter. This yeah. is what it means. You forgot to be fully expressed. Mm-hmm. And then what happens is they either make it to shore, or I like to call it the, you know, shore of possibility, right? Where they feel like something has shifted and, or it brings up the next wave. Cause a lot mm-hmm. of times there's layers. There's I'm disheartened. And underneath that there's grief and then there's resentment and then there's whatever. So it's yeah. like ride all the waves and actually thematically feel it. Yeah, and that's that's one of the things I see a lot in my work too. Is like, man, I got to get them to feel. I got to get them to connect. And that's why I found like MDMA is so powerful because it's an associative versus you know psilocybin and and Aya or disassociative. They're great for different reasons, and they're both beautiful for healing. But I want them to feel through that, do the inner child work, reconcile the inner parts work so that, like they can, it feels complete and then it's yeah. resolved energetically. I'm curious, like when you think about, I have a few more questions. One on like, when you think about what's happening in the healing space right now, what gets you juiced? Like, where do you see kind of leading edge of innovation, the leading edge of opportunity, the leading edge of, of growth where more people should be like, Oh, we need to go deeper in this that's not discussed enough whether it's polybagel you know different wearing devices <laughs> technologies or psychedelics or new forms of or expansive uh teachings in somatic I, I don't know i'm i'm genuinely curious where you see the biggest opportunity because you've been in the space longer than i have yeah uh i see it as I I see in the past few years what's come online a lot is a lot of somatic practices, whether it's breathwork facilitators, you know, that are just saying breathwork's all you need, 
or uh, you know or psychedelics it's like this is all you need and everyone's you know booking their flight to peru <laughs> uh, and which is exciting because coming from years where it was just nlp and mindset and that was you know that yeah, yeah. that's what was hot in the, you know around like 2005 to 2012 and then so it's beautiful to see somatic come online um, mm -hmm. I'd like to see more people acknowledging the importance of both together. Mm -hmm. yeah, of of the that. mind in somatics, is that what you mean? Or... The mind and the body working yeah. together. You know, yeah. I say that like stage two of healing is the feeling, is the acceptance yeah. and, and accepting like your nervous system, accepting it and, mm -hmm. and being able to feel what's actually there. And then stage three is getting to the root of it. This is where we start to bridge the gap between, okay, this is what you felt, but like, where did you learn this? Where yeah. did you like, like, like the limiting beliefs that come up in stage one of awareness, the trigger that brought all this up that now you're feeling through the trigger, mm. you're doing the somatic part of it. But now stage three is the exploration of getting to the root of whose energy is this? Because yeah. by the time you were seven years old, your script was written most yeah. predominantly by what you learned from mom and dad, whether you copied or rebelled or needed to create a way to survive. And so that exploration of like, is this even your energy? Is this yeah. even your belief? Is yeah. this even your emotion? I had so many clients that are like, I'm, I had a client the other day, like, I feel all this guilt. And then we explored it deeper and he's like, he's like, this is my father's guilt. This isn't even mine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where that generational trauma has continued. Mm -hmm. And so that exploration, I feel, is the bridge from like, okay, you felt it, but now let's look into the subconscious of where was this first programmed in there? And then what did you need in that moment? Like, yeah. or, or. And, and that leads to stage four, which is reparenting and rewiring. So the opportunity for us to give ourselves to rewrite that script yeah. Yeah. and to rewire that into our subconscious and into ourselves somatically to have the experience of, I made space. I felt through whatever was taking up room that I didn't want to feel. Yeah. And then I uncovered what it was and now I get to create something new. And then stage five, which is the integration, which mm. is where lasting transformation happens. And mm. I don't see enough people do this. I yeah. see people that love the healing space so much yeah. so that they become lifelong explorers of digging and digging and digging, always thinking that there's more, there's more, there's yeah. more, there's more. I need to find more. And I'm like, are you taking action? <laughs> like I, I told the client recently, I'm like, you're good. You're still sad. This is the client that is grieving, you know, her, her marriage of 28 years. I was like, you have felt through all of this. I go, it's yeah. time for you to still leave room for at times that grief is going to come up, but you've got to start taking action. Now you've got to start integrating all this into your life. Mm. Yeah, I can't can't agree more. Yeah, it's an um, eighteen month process on average wow. to integrate something that's big in your life, mm. and the integration, education, stabilization, because mm. it's a journey of all those. And so I think that when people really look at, well, what are you doing? What stage are you really hitting upon here? Are you? Sometimes you meet a client and they're in stage four and they just need stage five in that one session. Sometimes if all people are doing is feeling and feeling and feeling and feeling, it's like, okay, time to actually move into the other <laughs> stages of it. And so I see that there's gaps in that in the healing space yeah. where people are just focused on a particular tool, um, you know, a particular method, but not necessarily making sure that you're moving through a complete process yeah. and knowing to recognize in a client where they're at in 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 the stages with yeah. whatever area of their life uh and making sure to supporting them in completing that and then sometimes reminding them a lot when they're in integration like yeah how many months are you in integration? oh just four yeah keep going yeah <laughs> keep going 
Uh, and that, yes, it could happen quicker with smaller areas of your life. But if you're talking about shifting like a big part of your identity from being a people pleaser, let's say, to being someone that asserts their boundaries and has a voice. Yeah, you're looking at about 18 months. And by the way, that's not something I made up. That comes from my mentor who passed away, who was facilitating deep healing work for 40 years. So mm. that's what he said. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll and that. it's something that I've seen time and time again yeah. be true for myself and others. Cool. Amazing.